Bears Day in Pasadena. As we check the Pac-10 standings with three weeks to go, only Washington and Arizona State can control their own destiny. Either win their next three, they have a trip to the Rose Bowl. On the other hand, UCLA with a tie, a tie that hurt them more than Washington's loss last week to Stanford. They cannot control their destiny. And so we come to a very crucial game here in the great Pacific Northwest. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender along with Steve Davis. And Steve, this is the best record that UCLA has had since 1976. They're trying to get to the Rose Bowl for the first time in 16 years. When you look at the top 10 teams in college football, there are two real surprises in UCLA and Arizona State. And I think the reason UCLA is most complete football team maybe in the game this year, Tom Ramsey, Ramsey's transformation from an average quarterback to a development of an outstanding quarterback has made all the difference in the world. For UCLA to win the ball game today, they've got to be able to get into their attack, their balanced attack. Don't let Washington control you and physically beat you and endure you. And then I think the other point is don't worry about being controlled by the uncontrollable, the weather and the wind and all the factors today, the crowd. And I think UCLA's got an excellent chance. 45 degrees, that is our temperature today. A real story that has developed is that Terry Donahue, looking at him now, suffered food poisoning last night, both he and his wife, Andrea. And you can see that he definitely is going to have to bear the elements today. It's going to be difficult, cold, and of course, with the food poisoning. Now, as far as the Washington Huskies are concerned, they're a football team that's trying to win their third straight Pac-10 title. And no one's done that since USC did in 72 through 74. That's right. Don James told us yesterday one of the problems about this team is that they've not really improved week after week. And remember, this is a senior-dominated ball club. They've been to three bowl games, and they really have struggled. They've not played complete. They've been incomplete on offense most of the time. And one of the problems has been inconsistency at the quarterback position. Tim Cowan will get his first start today for Washington. I think he's going to give them the extra emotional spark and the talent that they need. They've got to be able, early in the ball game to do their balance attack, do what they've done all year long and then be able to, to put pressure on young Ramsey the quarterback of UCLA and here are the Huskies of Washington they were ranked number one for seven weeks before that loss last week against Stanford Don James the Dean of Pac-10 coaches and so the stage is set as we have a big football game of the Pac-10 conference we'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment a problem up here as far as Southern California teams are concerned. You can see the wind that's gusting, the temperature 45 degrees. We may have rain off and on. As you can see, thunderstorms are forecast. Teams from Southern California come up here and they go into a state of shock for a while. But we watched the Bruins yesterday, Steve Davis. They worked out for a long try and trying to acclimate themselves to it. They were on the field for an hour and 15 minutes. And I, as I said in the pregame, you cannot let the uncontrollable things control you in the ball game. You can't let the crowd or the weather. Now, physically, it'll, they'll be much aware of it during the whole course of the ball game. But don't let it control you. This man has been awesome. Chuck Nelson has hit 26 field goals in a row. That's an NCAA record. And the kicking game could be very big before this day is over. UCLA has won the toss. They have elected to receive. They are the leading kickoff return team in the country. And number eight going back there, Doki Williams is fourth in the nation. Williams can really move. He's a track star. He's out of Oceanside, California. And kicking off will be Nelson. It's hard to tell whether they have the wind to their back or not. It looks as though they are. But as we talk to both coaches, it swirls. And it can change. Each quarter, you can have the wind to your back. Nelson ready. Mr. Perfect, as they call him. He hasn't missed a point after or a field goal attempt this year. And this game is underway. It's going to be JoJo Townsell. Townsell out to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. And he's going to be rammed out of bounds at the 23-yard line. A 24-yard return. Vince Albritton knocked him out. Let's now look offensively at UCLA. There's Ramsey. What a year he's having. Cephas will start at running back. Carney, Townsell, what a brace of wide receivers they are for the Bruins. The offensive line has to have some changes, and one of the big changes has been Irv Eatman. He started at offensive tackle for the first time last week and did a very creditable job, and there is Ramsey. Granada Hills, California, the passing efficiency leader in the nation. He gives to Cephas, and Cephas, a flag on the play, brings the ball across the 25 to the 27-yard line. 
Air Donahue. That's what they're starting to say about UCLA. They've been throwing the ball so effectively at a record pace. Tackling by face mask. And so that will get UCLA off on good footing on this initial series. As they will advance the football across the 30-yard line. Ramsey. The difference Don James said between he and John Elway is he's four inches shorter. He is a phenomenal athlete this year. He's really played well. Face yards, five face mask, five yard penalty. And so you can have a five or a ten or a fifteen yard penalty. It was not that flagrant, but the five yard penalty gives them the first down to the 33 yard line. Carney, Williams split out along with Townsville. Three wideouts on this play. Tom Ramsey taking a lot of time at the line. Gives off. This is Cephas again, and Cephas to the 38 yard line. Cephas has been alternating in that backfield along with Kevin Nelson and Danny Andrews. Defensively, Dean Browning, whose brother Dave plays in the National Football League. Ray Cadditch, a very steady performer at right tackle for the Huskies. The linebacking core, Mark Stewart, I'm sure you've heard about him. He's the All American on the left hand side. He has him to the line of scrimmage, the 38. Andrews, and now Bruno in the backfield. This is Danny Andrews. Andrews advancing to the 40-yard line, where he's still going to be considerably short of the first down. It's going to bring up a second down and eight to go. Back deep, Ray Horton, an All-American. He'll return punts today because Anthony Allen, who usually does that, is out with an ankle injury. O'Connor is their leading tackler at the strong safety spot. Second down, eight from the 40-yard line. Cephas back in along with Bruno in the backfield. Ramsey wanting to throw, has beautiful protection, almost intercepted. Good reaction by Tony Caldwell, number 48, a senior from Compton, California. That was intended for Cephas coming out of the backfield. It's third down, eight. Ball just short of the 40-yard line. You can see the protection he's getting, and that's one of the reasons, Steve Davis, UCLA has thrown the ball so effectively. Eatman from the left-hand side has a real matchup along with Ray Caddy, who's lined up nose-to-nose -nose with him. On a third and eight. Ramsey in trouble, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Ramsey hit by Ron Holmes, number 90, a sophomore from Lacey, Washington. And this sellout crowd of 60,000, happy about the defensive stand. As going back to kick will be Kevin Bunafe, Ray Horton receiving for Washington. A low snap. Bunafe, high, lazy kick, hits at the 35. It'll take a Bruin bounce to the 30. And that's where it's going to be blown dead. Washington with their first offensive opportunity after a 33-yard kick. Well below Buena Fe's average of about 42. We'll be back. The Huskies with the ball. There's no score. From the 30, Washington will set it up. Ted Town starting for the first time, for the first time since the second game of last year. Moran and his running mate Dow both weigh about 300 pounds in an offensive tackle spot. Count on first down to throw. Intended for Jacques Robinson. Good coverage that time. Walter Lang flying up from the safety spot. Lang is playing in place of the injured Sullivan. Up front, David Randall, the SMU transfer. Watch Carl Morgan, number 40. He's their best defensive player. Delacono is just a sophomore out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, their best linebacker. And there's Lang, who's replacing Tom Sullivan, who did not make the trip due to a back injury. James, Jacques Robinson in the backfield, second and ten. James, a big, strong fullback, gets close to five to the 35-yard line. And now for an NCAA Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Gary, Notre Dame went to a gadget play. Watch quarterback Blair Keel hand it off. It'll go back to him, and Joe Howard breaks free against the Panthers. 55-yard Notre Dame touchdown. Pittsburgh has kicked a field goal. It's a one-point game, 12 minutes to go. Back to Gary Bender. Brent, the top-ranked Pittsburgh Panthers. Notre Dame trying to struggle back after that tie against Oregon. Stancy, the wide receiver, has a first down catch for Washington of nine yards, advancing the ball to the 42. The all-time leading receiver 
in Washington history, Paul Scanzi. Scanzi, number seven, the flanker. It's just an inside pass. It's not very far. It's a very safe. A lot of cushion. That's one of the things the UCLA secondary has got to be aware of today, not to give these receivers very much cushion. I would think that would give Tim Cowan a lot of confidence to complete that pass after missing his earlier attempt. First down, gives to Robinson, the sophomore from San Jose, and he moves the ball to the 44. Carl Morgan, the man we mentioned, number 40. And here is a final, a big win for Clemson. That sets up that big game next week against Maryland. North Carolina now losing two in a row, and Michigan still unbeaten in the Big Ten. Beating Illinois, and they may be in the Rose Bowl, the way things look now. From the 44, no gain on that last play. James Robinson in the backfield, Scanzi in motion. Cowan looking his way. There he goes to Scanzi. That play was messed up. Jimmy Turner, the cornerback, hit Scanzi, and they just couldn't get the play underway. One of the things that the UCLA coaches were really concerned about is Washington's ability, because of their size and their strength, to be able to just dominate the ball game and control the football. And right now, really coming out and throwing, really is playing into the hand of UCLA. They were hoping that they would throw a little bit more than just run and hammer at them all day. Washington without Anthony Allen, replacing him as Aaron Williams. Scanzi starting his 42nd consecutive game. That is a Washington record. Cowan back in trouble. He got away. The big, strong quarterback. He delivers. Completion. And that's Aaron Williams. Williams replacing Allen. A 13-yard catch. First down for the Huskies. There at the 43-yard line of UCLA. Williams is here now with 18 catches. They started out with double coverage. He runs right by Durden, 29. There he is, Williams, number two, breaks, and then comes back. A good receiver will come back to the football. See, he goes to the open area. Excellent execution. He was five for 62 last week for a touchdown. On a first down, give their Jock Robinson inside the 40. Good leg drive. And fancy the ball to the 37-yard line. Very good diversification now by Washington offensively. It's the tempo that you want to create offensively is get the defense stunning when you're not throwing the football. Do opposite things than what the defense is doing, and that's what they're doing right now. You saw that stat on Robinson. He had those nagging injuries that got him started slowly, but he's come on strong. Second down and five. Robinson again, and he's close to the first down, advancing to the 33-yard line. This is the leading rushing team in the Pac-10, the Washington Huskies. Robinson, let's see if he got the first down. They may have to measure to bring the sticks in and will. The ball resting in the vicinity of the 33. Robinson had 174 yards in the Rose Bowl and that 28-0 shot out of Iowa. And the interesting thing about it, he didn't really play till late in the year, but they were running against the USC team all week. He was on the scout squad. And they all of a sudden noticed they couldn't stop him. He was acting like Marcus Allen. In fact, as effective as Marcus Allen. They're just short of the first down. And so Jacques Robinson was then put up on the team. He had a good game against USC and on to the Rose Bowl. And you know what he's done since. Third down and in inches. James Robinson in the backfield. And that will be Cowan seeking. And he has the first down. Tim Cowan, who tore ligaments in his thumb in the second game last year against Kansas State, been waiting, not really patiently, but waiting to get back into the starting lineup. Steve Pleur, who's not starting, who has started all the previous ball games this year, really has struggled, did not ever really get back to the area of his performance last fall. See, he was 2-0 last year. This is the 10th play of this drive, a first down. Cowan, excellent protection. And that's Williams. He's got it. Aaron Williams out of Tacoma, Washington. First down grab, a 15-yard pickup, and that's going to set it up just short of the 15-yard line. I really am surprised at the type of cushion that UCLA is giving them. Watch Williams, number two, just break. Now, he's in the open area. That's too much cushion. Turner, 35, was defending. Lang should have dropped back a little quicker. Well, you know, the coaches said they didn't feel there was that much drop-off to Williams from Anthony Allen, who has 33 catches. That's real depth. First down, just short of the 15. Scanzi in motion. Jock Robinson inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. This is a really 
time possession drive. 9.54 now left in the first quarter. I don't think we can make the point too many times in this drive that Washington really was anticipated by the UCLA coaches to be hammering and using that strength. And they're really using diversification in their game, throwing the ball. Florida State, 42 to 12. And so it's a second down now. Six yards to go. Pounds and scans in motion. Second man handoff. Now he's got to keep it. And Callan to the five. Looked like he wanted to hand off, did not get it exchanged, and did the second best thing, advancing the ball, and he's very close to a first and goal. Let's look at the expression on his face. I don't think it was really ever planned to hand the ball off. Maybe it was. I couldn't tell. He made a lot out of it, though. Made a big play. Tim Callan, the quarterback. That is a first and goal. Looked like an Oklahoma option quarterback on that one. Yeah, it looked like he turned around and faked to so many different people. He said, oh, I'm supposed to give it to one of you people. Blue two, Roseboro, two tight ends in on a first and goal. Short of the five-yard line. Robinson inside the five to the four. Four yards. Cowan in this drive, picking out Aaron Williams as his favorite target. And... I think an interesting story developing there. Cowan's been running second team. Williams has been running second team. So it might be natural, Steve, to look to him. Of course, he's worked with him a lot in practice, and so that gives him a real advantage because they work together a lot because usually it's first and second teams working with individual people, and so I think it is to his advantage to have Mr. Williams in the ball game. Second and goal, 14th play. This drive starting from the Washington 30. Cowan gets off. Robinson, touchdown. Robinson, that's his sixth touchdown rush into the air from four yards out. What an impressive drive. Chuck Nelson, thus far this year, he is 29 of 29 on point afters. And he just hit his 30th in a row. 7 nothing. The Washington Huskies with the lead. A 70-yard drive. 14 plays. It took four minutes, 42 seconds, and the Huskies are on their way. Well, that shows you how thorough that drive was. 37 yards passing by Cowan, 18 rushing by Robinson, and they were 3 of 3 on third down conversions. Nelson to kick off. 7 0 the Huskies. Trying to climb back after that upset last week against Stanford. Nelson. And that one's going to make it in for the touchback. It looked like it might go out of bounds, did not. All right, Steve Davis, let's go back now. Take another look at that touchdown. If you're a linebacker, you're looking. Watch the misdirection, the flow. It goes one way and then back the other. Jock Robinson just bust, bust into the end zone for the touchdown. UCLA is a very aggressive, attacking defense. That's taking advantage. When the misdirection, they're the good blocks on the outside, and Jock Robinson goes through virtually untouched. Quite a block Mallory. on that play by Rick Mallory. He's a former tight end. So UCLA now trailing 7-0 from the 20-yard line. In motion, that's Harper Howe, the tight end. Seifert, Seifert, good second effort. That'll pick him up six yards to the 26-yard line. Now let's go back to the NCAA today for a report. Here's Trent Musburger. Gary Herschel Walker's longest run of the season. 30 yards for a touchdown. Georgia opens up on Florida, 7-0. Now watch Herschel. They'll try to hit him low, and he gets past the linebacker. They'll try to hit him high. He shakes off the safety. Georgia up by seven. Back to Gary. Herschel Walker vying for that Heisman Trophy. We come here. Breaking out is Danny Andrews, and Andrews into the Washington, into the field of the 48-yard line. The sophomore from Carson, California, had a 79-yard game against Washington State. That's a 28-yard run. Vince Newsom eventually made the tackle. Let's watch the offensive lineman. Williams, number 60, makes a good block inside. They're the other guard. Uh, Love makes one the tackle, and Andrews just breaks into the secondary. 28 yards. They'll be using four different running backs. Sipa started the game. That was Andrews. And now Sipa goes in motion. Bruno, the big fullback. And Bruno across the 45, inside to the 44. 
Bruno, they feel, is one of the fine football players they've had at that fullback spot in the history of the school. Big, strong player. It's going to bring up second down still, seven yards to go. It's UCLA team, even though they're known for their passing, have scored 19 yards on the ground and 19 by the air. Nelson now has come in, number three, at the tailback spot. On a second and seven, Nelson, he didn't get anything. Kevin Nelson, the younger brother of Darren Nelson, who, of course, now playing for the Minnesota Vikings. Ken Driscoll and Tim Neamber, the inside linebackers, made the stop for Washington. All we heard this week from Washington is the intensity hot picked up. Penn State. They're getting ready for that big battle at the end with Pittsburgh. And you saw what Pittsburgh was doing against Notre Dame in that update a moment ago. Third down, still seven. In motion again goes Howell. Ramsey, lots of time to throw all day. Bruno, and he had to worry that time about Caldwell, the linebacker who was waiting for that ball. And that's going to bring up fourth down. So the Bruins will have to kick. Not able to take advantage of that 28-yard run. They have to get rid of it. And Bonafé from Hawaii, California, will be kicking to Ray Horton. 33-yard average, but for the year, a 42.6 at third in the Pac-10. Left footer, Horton, fair catch. Ooh, at the 15-yard line. A little football showing on that one. And so Washington, with a 7 nothing lead, will have the football just outside the 15, a 28-yard kick by Bonafé. CBS Sports Sunday tomorrow. There's part of that sellout crowd. They've had this game sold out for over a month. Washington has the first down just outside their 15. They have a 7 to nothing lead. 6.06 to go, first quarter. Straight up the middle comes Chris James. Mike Barbie, a senior from Sacramento, made the stop. And Tim Cowan, who waited a long time to start, has his team moving. It's got to give him some confidence. And Notre Dame leading top-ranked Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's dodged the bullet a few times this year already. Look at this. Alabama has really been tough on LSU. They're playing in Birmingham, and LSU has not won there since 1909. Second and six. Second down, seven. James Robinson in the backfield. Cowan on a rollout. Wide open. Roseboro. Roseboro could not hang on. Roseboro this year has 16 catches. He's a former fullback. That's the reason he wears number 32. They like to have him in there more for his blocking. And as you can see, maybe not for his pass catches. Look how tight this series has been, Steve. Last time that Terry Donahue was here in 78, he had food poisoning, too. He may never come back here. <laughs> or not want to eat the next time he can. I guess he and his wife, Andrea, at 4 or 5 in the morning got very, very ill. And we hope Terry's going to be all right. Third down coming up. That's for Washington. Three of three. Give to James. James battering ahead. He's close to the first down. He may have gotten it across the 25. Don Rogers made the stop. James playing with a knee that has to be drained each week. Very impressed with him. You don't hear a lot about number 31, but he's been a very durable, a very, very consistent player, and that is a first down. What Washington is doing to UCLA right now is because UCLA is such an aggressive, not a blitzing necessarily, but a very tough defensive team, they're running the misdirection play and taking advantage of it and running by people. Now they're 4-4 four four on third down. Those four lined up in the wrong place. First down across the 25-yard line. Jock Robinson. He's out to the 30-yard line. Gain of three, almost four. Washington having some good ball control. You keep that ball away from the total offense leading team of the Pac-10. That's the best defense you can have. And right now, they'll come to a second down. Let's make it six to go. Robinson from behind and what he sees defensively with Cowan, number 14. Here is Robinson. Good reaction by UCLA, and it's going to come to a third down, and still a good four yards to go. Let's go back to New York now for an NCAA Today report. Here again is Brent Musburger. 
Gary, Alabama is coming back. 7.43 left in the third, and the Bear gets a touchdown. Walter Lewis to Joey Jones. The pass play covers 28 yards. Beautifully thrown just over the LSU defender. It is now 17-10. Back to Gary. Well, it looks like the Bear is averting that shutout, Brent, anyway, from the 31-yard line. Third down, still five yards to go. Cowan in trouble. Morgan got him. Carl Morgan, the nose guard. They're going to rule it incomplete. He got rid of the ball as he was going down. I want to see this one again. Tim Cowan is going to find very quickly there's somebody in his hip pocket. Carl Morgan, number 40, the nose guard, comes off the block and just dominates and hit Cowan right up around the top of the body. That's not a whole lot of fun. Well, explain to me why that wouldn't be ruled intentional grounding. <laughs> well, <laughs> the judgment call. It really is. Anyway, it's fourth down anyway. Hartridge back to kick. His older brother, Rick, of course, kicking in the NFL. Jeff Partridge out of Tustin, California. Lupe Sanchez back for UCLA. A beautiful kick. Sanchez from the 23. Got an alley. Out to the 35 and dropped there. Hard open field tackle that time. A 46-yard kick. A 12-yard return. UCLA trails by seven further support our position as to what has changed at UCLA. Look how they've become a throwing team. Average passes 13 and a half now over 31 and a half a game. Air Donahue in full force at UCLA. Now they're on the ground though as Bruno across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Picking up some good yardage on the play. Bruno out of the New Jersey area. Ken Driscoll made the stop for Washington. I think what's significant about the graphic we just showed you is the fact that in the mid-70s, college football was getting away from the trend of the option game. And now with the new passing rules of the blocking and the bump rule, now it's more advantageous to throw the ball. They were, in fact, running the wishbone when Terry took over at UCLA. And here's an option. Ramsey pitching back to Stapleton. A action play by Stapleton. Bill Stapleton, number 11 from San Francisco. An honorable mention, all Pac-10 performed in the last two years, and he made that play go nowhere. Had they gotten by Stapleton, there was some running room. A lot of people may be wondering, why is UCLA running the option play? Washington is playing pass. They do not have the quick support out of the secondary. This time they play it very, very well. UCLA has not run the option this play, but they're trying to take advantage of a weak secondary playing way off of the pass. Third and seven. Ramsey. Come on, Mark Stewart. Tony Caldwell, but Stewart got there first. Stewart, the All-American from San Jose. And Ramsey. And his teammates are going to have to kick the football. That's a loss of his seven yards on the play. And the intensity that they talked about in training camp, in practice all week, is evidenced here today in the game. They felt that Washington had lost some of that intensity. But they've gotten it back for this big game. Puna play to kick. Big rush, almost blocked. End over end. It takes the UCLA bounce, and Horton will down it at the 31 yard line. Chris O'Connor almost got a piece of that ball, the strong safety, and that's a 37 yard kick. Notre Dame leading Pittsburgh, and what a big upset that would be for the Fighting Irish. There are going to be any unbeaten teams where this year is going on. West Virginia, Temple, who has the outstanding passing attack. And Miami of Florida. Now, they lost Jim Kelly, and they also suspended their backup quarterback. And Ohio State running over the Golden Gophers. Don James, speaking of Ohio, he coached at Kent State before coming here. On a first down count, lots of time. Over the middle, Robinson. They had all kinds of time to throw the football. Well, let's update something that's happening back in the East. Let's go once again to New York and Brent Musburger. All right, Gary, here's the touchdown you just reported. Notre Dame is going to upset Pittsburgh today. They have taken a 31-16 lead. Their band is celebrating. Pinkett here at an isolated replay. He powers him behind the fullback, his second touchdown of the afternoon. Back to Gary Bender. Well, they have to be happy there. Thank you, Brent. Second down, 10. Town with James Robinson in the backfield. Scanzi, check that. Williams. Williams couldn't quite make the connection, and it's going to come to a third down. It's one of the few he's dropped today. 
This man was having some problems with the books. He did not go out for track last spring, but he has finished as high as fourth in the Pac-10 in the long jump. He's gone over 25 feet. What an athlete. Third down, 10 now for the Husky. Danzi to the top, split out. Williams to the bottom. 7-0, Washington. Cowan. This is Williams who comes back to him, but that's going to be short of the first down. He's dropped at the 38-yard line. Jimmy Turner over there and Tim Cowan kind of going through the motions there of rethrowing the football. Fourth down, Washington. Hartridge will go back and kick. And Sanchez will go back deep for UCLA. There's Hartridge. Hartridge coming in here averaging 40.6, fifth best in the league. And he hit a beauty. Sanchez will go out of bounds with it inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. So from the 19 is where UCLA will have it after a 44-yard kick. What a beautiful area this is. Lake Washington in the background. Terry Donahue's team coming in here trying to win their third in a row in Seattle. They have won four of five since Donahue has played Washington. Washington has been great on the teams from the Northwest, losing only one game against teams in the Northwest, the Oregons and the Washingtons, since Don James came here. Cephas will get a couple of yards to the 22-yard line. That's for Steve Davis. I, you don't see UCLA maybe as wide open as you would anticipate. And really, I think that's probably to the surprise of Washington because they're playing basically a three-man rush. They're having five underneath line backers or people playing a five-under type defense. And really, UCLA has not gone downfield with them. Second down, seven. Standing up, they're getting excited. Last home game of the year for the Huskies. Bruno and Nelson in the backfield for Nelson or Ramsey. Over the middle to Nelson. Nelson has a first down. Kevin Nelson out to the 33-yard line. If Nelson could stay healthy for this UCLA team, he could be a big difference. Here's a perspective from the defensive secondary look what they see right across the middle now nelson coming out of the backfield really a lot of cushion ucla is not getting a lot of pressure on the secondary at the backs or the receivers they give me a lot of commission and so we have come to the end of the first quarter of play the washington huskies leading ucla seven to nothing some people say We start the second quarter play. Andrews in the backfield for UCLA has a turner, corner turn and he moves the ball out to the 43-yard line. Mark Stewart eventually rammed him out of bounds. That's very close to the first down. Going to be just short, maybe a half yard. Andrews made two big plays in this game. Earlier he was able to go 28 yards. And at halftime, we'll be joining Brent and Aaron. You've been watching some of the updates, the upsets in the making back east. And then Ed Marinero, who played at Cornell, setting 17 NCAA records, gained 4,000 yards in three years, in their own words, at halftime. Second down, half yard to go. Howell in motion. Cephas, and Cephas has a first down. Across the 45, Tony Caldwell making the tackle for Washington. UCLA now with the good field position. Here's what's happened in that first half. We told you, UCLA, they don't have Air Donahue going yet. It's really been surprising on what uh, UCLA only having 11 yards of uh, passing. And then I guess Washington, the real point there is UCLA did not want Washington dominating the football game and controlling the ball. 9.09, first quarter is too much time with the ball. And one drive that they scored on took almost five minutes. First down from the 45. Ramsey. Williams broken up. Stapleton. Stapleton. Going with Doki Williams. Williams also a track star. Stapleton's made two good plays. That tackle earlier on a third down and breaking this one up. Stapleton, number 11, will be the covered uh, back here on uh, Doki Williams, number eight. Really, I think that ball is not thrown right where it had to be. I think he wanted to go a little bit outside and then broke to the inside. And 
Mr. Stapleton's there on the coverage. There they were, though, throwing on first down. That's a little what you expect from this UCLA team. Second down, 10 for the 45. Bruno in along with Kevin Nelson in the backfield. Ramsey to throw again. Look out. Pressure put on that caddy. Ray Caddy, number 61 out of Spokane. He leads them in tackles for loss, and that's the third sack of this game. Watch Eatman, number 75. It'll be the left. He just lets him get by him. See Eatman? He loses position on Cadig 61. Actually blocks him in to young Ramsey. That was one of the matchups we wanted to watch today was Cadig against Irv Eatman. Cadig won that one. And now it's third down. Long yardage to go. 17 yards to go. Now Zell stood out along with Cormac Carney. Complete to Bruno. A big pullback will be dropped at the 42. It'll be fourth down. The ball is loose, but it's been blown dead. UCLA will have to kick. Terry Donahue, I imagine he is not feeling well. The flu poisoning. His team trailing 7 to nothing. He told me, he said, if we would go unbeaten this year and not go to the Rose Bowl, which can happen because they cannot control their own destiny, he says he'd hate to think what he might do. Horton. Back deep now for Washington. Una play, number 17 to kick. Low kick. Horton from the 21. Good reaction by UCLA. That's Bruno who got down there in a hurry. 36-yard kick. Lost a couple of yards on the return. Washington and Don James leading this game 7-0. 3.30 Eastern tomorrow, the NBA on CBS. The Supersonics won their fifth in a row last night, defeating the Knicks. Of course, David Thompson off and really rolling. And Dave Cowens now playing for the Milwaukee Bucks. That's tomorrow here on CBS. On the 19-yard line, Washington has James and Robinson in the backfield. They also have a 7-0 lead. Cowan gives off to Robinson. He moves it to the 20, a gain of one. And now again, let's go to Brent Musburger for an NCAA Today report. Jerry, he flies through the air with the greatest of ease. He's the man on the flying trapeze for the Bulldogs. Herschel Walker right now with two touchdowns and 107 yards and 15 carries. Back to Gary Bender. Boy, is Herschel Walker rolling today. The Georgia Bulldogs still unbeaten. Give to Jock Robinson on a second down nine. Robinson, Robinson will advance the ball to the 22. It'll bring up third down for the Huskies. Washington, as you saw in that first quarter, they had the ball over nine minutes. And again, with 12-12 to go in this first half, good ball possession. That's eight and two, but that record, not what Terry Donahue's done against them. He's four and one. Four of six now on third downs, and this is third and seven. To Roseboro, he hangs on to this one, but I believe he's short of the first down. It's going to bring up fourth down for Washington. UCLA is getting Washington into predictable passing situations. He goes to Roseboro, number 32, the tight end. Again, a lot of cushion. UCLA is giving uh, the receivers of Washington. We do not want to give them that much coverage. That secondary of Terry Donahue's has 15 interceptions, but they've also given up the big plays, and that might be the reason for some of that cushion. Hartridge to kick. He hit a real boomer this time. Sanchez inside the 20. Gets some of it back to the 25-27 yard line. That was a 54-yard kick on a cold day, a damp day. Didn't affect Hartridge that time. Dave Stransky made the tackle. UCLA with the ball. When a business grows, it often grows out of control. Simple procedures become gigantic problems. Things like billing, filing, and shipping become too big to handle the old way. Why not get one of IBM's low-cost small computers like Datamaster? It puts you back in control, and it can grow. Here's to a great future. As your business grows. We come back now. The ball at the 27-yard line. UCLA trailing 7-0. Don 
James his eighth year as coach thus far. UCLA on four possessions has won five plays, five plays, three and six before punting. This time Andrews up to the 32. Tadage makes a stop. Andrews has been their most effective weapon thus far. Notre Dame a final. What a win for Jerry Faust and the Fighting Irish. Pittsburgh ranked number one. I don't believe a lot of unbeaten teams. Georgia, Arizona State. Last week, Washington losing their first. UCLA coming here unbeaten but once tied. Cephas in the backfield along with Bruno. Second down. Six yards to go. Ramsey. Cephas with a catch, and that'll be enough for a first down. Just short of the 40-yard line, Stewart over to make the stop. Thus far, Steve Davis, Cormac Carney, Townsville, they have been very quiet in the receiving department. So many times when you, you're so conscious and aware as we look at other scores of great receivers, then you have a tendency, you've got to go to other places, make them start concentrating on your back out of the backfield. They'll be catching balls a little bit later in the ballgame, I promise you. And that's where Cephas picked up the first down a moment ago. Kevin Nelson in, and Nelson spins to the 45-yard line. That'll bring up second down and five. I mentioned earlier, if this man could stay healthy, Nelson, what an addition he would be. Last year, he had four 100-yard games. This year, he's had nagging injuries. He comes out now. Andrews replaces him at tailback. This time, foot to the top goes Townsend. Two tight ends, Bergman and Howell are in. Second man handoff to Bruno. And the fullback has a first down for UCLA to the 46. Newsom, Vince Newsom, the free safety, making the stop. There's Bruno. He's a real leader on this football team. He was the all-Italian American, all-American team last year. Who votes for that? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't get a chance. The sun now is starting to come through here in Seattle. First down, 10, Ramsey. Open, Carney. Cormac Carney. He fumbled the ball. Washington has recovered at the 25. A 22-yard game, Meander, number 42, a sophomore. Tim Meander comes up with it. He's a leading tackler on this Washington team. Carney with his first reception and then a fumble. You'll notice that the linebackers will continue dropping. Watch this. The linebackers will drop. Carney will come right across the middle. Good protection. Now he catches the ball. Now put it away. Good receiver. Put it away. He's got it protected. As he's covering it up with both hands, the ball pops loose. Looks like he's trying to exchange the ball yeah, to each cover hand. It up. From the 25-yard line, Cowan now with the turnover on a first down. Hook Kansas. Make that Aaron Williams. Williams making the grab. He's across the 35. That would be enough for another Washington first down. UCLA's got to be a little bit stunned at the ability of Cowan to throw the ball so accurately. But look how much, again, the cushion of that UCLA secondary. A lot of coaches that I spoke to last week talking about the secondary of UCLA said there may be the best in the country. They could give a lot of people a lot of room. Don Rogers, their leading tackler from the free safety spot, made that tackle. Now, first down, gives to Robinson, putting his treacherous as he gets close to the 40-yard line. It's been raining off and on all week long. They did come in with a Zamboni machine to suck up some of the moisture. And as we mentioned, the sun creeping through. The weather is better than we anticipated. Temperature around 45 degrees at kickoff time. Second down. Seven yards to go. Robinson, James in the backfield. Cowan with time. And it's caught by Stanzi. Stanzi will be short of the first down at the 45. And Cowan is really playing with confidence now. You must remember... He hasn't seen that much playing time. Steve Pelour has been the starter all year. But Cowan, the senior, waiting to get the opportunity, moving the team. Third down, a yard to go. Cowan came in the game earlier this year and performed so well against California. And then last week, playing against Stanford effectively. Jack Robinson on third and one. Did he get it? Lee Knowles, 85, made the stop. 
going to be very close to a first down. The officials are going to measure. Jack Robinson is the kind of runner in the estimation of Don James, a north-south runner. He doesn't like to bend it wide. He likes to come right at you and then make the cut. One of the impressive things about him, though, is that he has still has that 9-8 speed as they get the first and 10. He really is deceptive, and he's one of those backs that a lot of times doesn't have the great blocks, but he makes yards. He's always falling forward. Ohio State. They've been having some shaky times, but not today. Minnesota pounded by Northwestern. Oh, they won their third of the year. Muddy Waters of Michigan State finally won a game last week. They go down today. Cowan on a bootleg. Broken up nicely that time. Good coverage coming up. That was Delacano, number 39, who got a hand on the ball from Baton Rouge. They thought he'd go to LSU. He's only four miles from that campus. And they have Ohio over Central Michigan. Bowling Green, of course, will have scores and highlights at halftime. With 7.33 to go in this first half. Mutu in at tight end. Robinson and James in the backfield. Second down, 10. Open Robinson. Robinson, who has nine catches coming into this game. Blanchard, Montgomery defending, and Cowan now saying, let's get this thing hooked up right. Third down coming up. One of the things that UCLA really have, I'm sure didn't prepare for, is look at the Washington third down conversion. They have not been throwing to the backs out of the backfield that much. They've been going down the field, so they really have that ability to throw it to the back. They're open. There's Sundancer, the mascot of the Washington Huskies. Third and ten. Cowan being chased. And he breaks out of it. But he's still going to be way short of the first down. He's to the 50-yard line. Kenny Page, 96, a junior from Colorado Springs, Colorado, came through first. A couple of players shaking up there is Page. They use him on pass rush situations, and that time he played off for them. This is the dimension that Tim Cowan gives Washington over Steve Fleur. He has the scrambling, the, that ability to just make something happen, uses his speed and his talent, and he's going to find the line of scrimmage one way or the other. Fleur is not quite as mobile. On a fourth down and nine, Partridge will kick. Sanchez back for UCLA all the way to the 10-yard line. This guy has been kicking the ball well, hasn't he? Sanchez, fair catch at the 12. UCLA still scoreless. A team that on five times has scored 40 or more points after that 39-yard kick. They have it at the 12, trailing 7-0. Enriquez able to pick up a victory in this fight. He thinks he's going to have a shot for the WBC Super Lightweight title. On the 12-yard line. UCLA with the football, trailing 7-0. Ramsey giving off to Andrews. And Andrews has been very effective running the ball. Moves it out to the 17-yard line. Driscoll and Browning on the stop. He has 47 yards and five carries. Now, shows you what UCLA has not been able to do offensively. Anytime you're in a passing type offense, it's extremely difficult. You've got to be very patient to take the short gains and the short passes. And they have not been able to sustain the drive and keep the ball away from Washington. Hammer offense. From the 16 and a half, second down. Little delay up the middle, Bruno. Dean Browning again, the junior from Fairfield, Washington. Browning's been moved to the nose tackle spot because Scott Garnett, their starter there, is out for the year. Browning had been playing the defensive tackle spot, out the nose guard, and Ramsey's gonna have to retool now. He has a third down and still a good four yards to go. the 18-yard line. Receivers to the top and the bottom. Ramsey rolling out. Caddy giving chase. He's got it up to Townsville, and that'll be a first down, and that gets him out of some precarious field position. Brings him out to the 39-yard line. Stapleton made the stop. You can see, Steve, it's kind of like a powder keg with guys like Townsville and Cormac Carney. Cattage 61, the defensive tackle, will put pressure on Tom Ramsey. Watch him right here. Gets the throw to Townsville, number 26. Again, the cushion. Both secondaries are allowing a lot of room. Really, I think I'd be throwing ever down until they started covering me. Townsville, the number two all-time leading receiver at UCLA. The only man ahead of him is his teammate, Carney. Here's Bruno. Bruno 
boy, was he hit at the 41 yard line. A pickup of two. That was Caddage, the man we mentioned earlier. Georgia. They are still unbeaten, but they're one of few. What do we mention now? SMU, Georgia, Arizona State. Of course, that's our other CBS game that being played in the Gator Bowl today. And Alabama now climbing back into that game in Agent Field in Birmingham. Arkansas also one of the unbeaten teams, not to forget them. Second down and eight. Ramsey on the pump. Complete. Townsend. Good ad lib effort. Ramsey really hit, though. He's getting up slowly. He's going to be okay. Boy, was he belted on that play. A 14 yard pickup. Holmes and Browning were the men that converged on number 14. Here's the difference in Tom Ramsey last year. As we look at all the pressure that he's getting there, Browning 99 really rolls over the top of his shoulder. Did you see that face mask? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't want to mention it because nobody else did the referee or anything. Like they should have had a face mask there. Now, six of nine for 81 yards. He's hit five in a row. Ramsey from the 45, first down. Intended for Bergman, the tight end. Paul Bergman, who has 25 catches. This guy was an outstanding receiver in high school. You know who his high school quarterback was? John Elway. And one time, he caught 72 passes in a season. So Ramsey on a second and 10. Changes coming in as Carney will come out. Another tight end has come in. Harper Howell, a junior from Boulder, Colorado. Townsell, the only wide out, put to the top. Now, Bergman dropping off in the wing position in motion. They're going to have a reverse to Townsell. Townsell's got some blocking, and he did not get to it. Townsell did not get to the block. It looked like he could have cut it up the field, but the reaction of Tony Caldwell was excellent by Washington, and they gained a yard, and that's all. Tony Caldwell, the outside linebacker, 48, really did his job. Watch the movement. Andrews goes. Here's Townsville, number 26, comes back. Tom Ramsey's trying to make a block on Caldwell, 48, and misses him. Good execution of the outside linebacker position. Stay at home, look, react, wait. There's the time left in this first half of play. Seven to nothing, UCLA trailing. Third down now, nine, Ramsey. Good mobility, but he's running into other difficulties. That is the fourth sack of the game by Washington. Mark Stewart got there, and Ramsey is having a tough time getting time to throw the football. As we said at the beginning of the football game, that one of the ways that you can stop or slow down UCLA is to pressure Tom Ramsey. He has been been hard pressed and it's been tough for him to throw very well he's got a lot of pressure that's with any passing attack i even had a hard time throwing the ball with pressure <laughs> mark stewart who watched some extra films this week that time coming up with the sack horton's going to let it hit and it's going to make it in for the touchback washington will have it from the 20 yard line a 47 yard kick that time by bruna his best effort of the afternoon 255 to go until halftime washington Leading UCLA seven to nothing. Hey, those two guys, Brent and Era, are going to have a lot to talk about at half. And Era's got to be excited about that Notre Dame upset of Pittsburgh. And then, in their own words, a feature on Ed Marinero, who's now an actor. What a job he's done in Hill Street Blues. Tom Ramsey frustrated. No points on the scoreboard yet for UCLA. In the 20, Washington Robinson fumbles the ball, but he gets on it. There quickly was Jimmy Turner, number 35. They'll lose some yardage. Back just to about the 15-yard line. What's Jock Robinson, 28? He puts the ball, well, he, no, he didn't. He never got really control of the football. I thought he put it, secured it, and then bounced it off his uh, shoulder pad, but he really never put the ball away, never controlled the ball. The uh, he's fortunate that ball came back to him. Lost of four yards, second and 14. Kanzi in motion. Second man handoff, Robinson, out to the 20, to the 21. Now they still have nine yards to go. Interesting point here. Mike Swanson, our statistician, points out that since Washington scored on that opening drive, they punted four straight times. So they have not really gotten their offense rolling since that point. We have a change defensively as now timeout is called. UCLA is going with Lee Knowles at an inside linebacking spot because Ron Butler sustained a knee injury. And so the timeout 
is called by UCLA. They have two left. Ball at the 21. It'll be third down, nine yards to go for the Huskies. Let's look at some scores now. Florida State has really been some surprise. That's a high-scoring one, isn't it? Makes them seven and one on the year right now. Florida State ranked 12th, as you can see on the. And here is Maryland. Now that is the seventh straight win for the Terrapins. Last week we saw them on CBS against North Carolina. Boomer Esaias in their quarterback, a left-hander, is something you're somebody you're going to hear a lot about. And Stanford leading Arizona. Arizona, of course, earlier this year upsetting Notre Dame. Air Force leading Army, and Air Force has had a good year. Had that wishbone going. From the 21, third down nine as we come back. Two minutes, ten seconds to go in the first half. The total offense closer than you might expect. Third down conversions at one time. Washington was four of four. From the 21, Cowan back. Going deep. Over there is Aaron Williams. Did he have it? He's out of bounds. Getting over quickly was Sanchez, along with Larry Thomas. So it's fourth down now. Cowan talking to his troops. And coming in to kick, and a man who's done very well is Partridge. Sanchez inside the 40, 204. UCLA has two timeouts left. I'd like to get on the scoreboard. Luffy Sanchez, back Here is Partridge. There's his average. I would think at this time of year it'd be tough to keep an average up as cold as it is. He hit this one very short. He did not get this one at all. But it's going to take a Washington bounce and go out of bounds at the 42. So UCLA now with 155 after a 37-yard kick. Will try somehow to at least get within field goal range. Don James, a seven to nothing lead, rumored for some time that he might move into the Seattle Seahawks job, but last week he brought all those rumors to a close as he announced he was going to stay at Washington. Cephas threw it on the backfield from the 42. Ramsey Bergman, Bergman hit by Meamber. Meamber. Good coverage defensively. Just a sophomore. There is Driscoll, his running mate in that inside linebacking spot. Bergman, the tight end, number 94. Watch Ramsey. They really haven't been able to get their passing game attack really going. He hit and gets the ball, knocks it up. Lucky he didn't get it picked off. Looks like Driscoll had a better yeah. shot at it than Meander did. Almost picked up. Second down, 10. Ramsey. The time he's gonna have to run it 50 gets out of bounds stops the clock and hit a little bit late over on the near side out of bounds at the 46 that'll be a first down for UCLA Madsen making the stop this is a dimension that really exceptional quarterbacks have to have and watch Ramsey isn't doesn't see what he wants to see downfield so he just tucks the ball away and runs out of bounds does get a little shot a little late out of bounds no penalty but a first down at the 46. Now remember, they have a fine field goal kicker in John Lee. Lee thus far has hit 11 of 13. He had four last week against Oregon. 142 left in the first half. Ramsey. Time. Nobody open. Now he hits Andrews. Andrews is tackled for no game. That is Stewart again, and Stewart is playing a whale of a game for this Washington club. They lose a yard on the play. That's a timeout now for UCLA. They have one left. Mark Stewart was a preseason All-American pick. Two-time All-Pac-10 second team, and he's made three or four very fine open field tackles. You, a lot of people may wonder, why is Tom Ramsey all of a sudden really just burst onto the scene as far as the type of quarterback he is? That really showed what is the transformation of him from last year. He set back. He didn't see the receivers open very quickly. He waited. Last year, he might have forced it, might have pushed it. This year, it took his time, looked for the open man, and completed the pass. Terry Donahue, there was some speculation he wouldn't be able to even coach today due to the food poisoning. Homer Smith would have taken over as the offensive man. And they would have brought in Hayes and Field, the assistant coaches. But Terry's there, and 
very much in this game, even though they trail 7 nothing with 127 left in the first half. I think the interesting thing to me thus far, Steve, is how much pressure they put on Ramsey. At the very beginning, Washington felt like that as they reviewed the film over the last few weeks of the season, that Tom has been hard-pressed, like any throwing quarterback, when you put a lot of people in front of him and make him think, get him away from being instinctive, make him think and worry about where people are coming from. After that loss, it's second down, 11 for UCLA. So Polly now in the backfield along with Kevin Nelson. The pump fake. Ramsey's going to try to run, and he loses yardage again. And that's five losses now behind the line of scrimmage. Ron Holmes, number 90 over there. Ramsey is just not able to find time to throw the football. Now they're ready to go without a huddle. Third down, 12. Now they're going to huddle up. Looks like they were going to go right to the line of scrimmage. Cephas comes in with a play. One minute left in this first half. You see the time remaining. Pounds up. Cormac Carney split out. Ramsey hit hard. And it is almost intercepted and is. Horton picked it off. Ray Horton is second interception. Ron Holmes was the man who hit Ramsey as he released the football, and that's the second turnover by the Bruins today. You might recall Carney fumbling earlier. He gets a lot of pressure inside. Holmes, number nine, he's one to put the pressure. Watch this, really well timed by Horton. Number 10 just stepped in front of the re intended receiver and made the play. That time, the cushion wasn't there. They were right where they had to be. Single man coverage on that side of the field. All-American Ray Horton has missed three games this year with an ankle sprain, but playing a strong game today. Cowan with 43 seconds, going for all of it. Turner's got the ball. Jimmy Turner. Turner has an open field at the 50, 45, 40, and UCLA still has a chance with 30-some seconds, 31 left. A 21-yard interception return by Turner. Cody, the center, made the stop, and UCLA now still trying to get within field goal range. I understand what they're trying to do. Cowan trying to make a big play after a big exchange. That happens normally. This time, they'll across the middle. The ball looks like a flying duck. Turner makes the interception and gives UCLA another chance. So many times in football where you have a big turnover, try to take advantage of it. Try to even put them even further to press. Make something happen. Turner, his second interception of the year. First down, short of the 40. Ramsey back again. High, but no place to throw. And he'll be sacked. That is six for the day. Stewart is there again, and Stewart is playing like an All-American. Two things are happening. One, that cushion's not there anymore, and the defense is putting such pressure on Ramsey. They have one timeout left, but they're going without a huddle. You see the time left. Hit Bergman. Bergman can't get out of bounds. They've got to stop the clock. They use their last timeout with four seconds. Four seconds left. Well, Lee, it's too far away for a field goal for him. Four seconds left. No timeouts remaining. You're trailing seven to nothing. UCLA running the ball more than you might expect. We said in the very beginning of the show that we felt like UCLA had to be balanced, that that's how they have gotten this far. And they are not balanced right now, and I think probably part of it is what they have invited Washington to throw the football, and they've just not gone after. They think they can take advantage of running the ball. How about this? A 54-yard attempt by Lee. John Lee will kick. He's 11 of 13. He had four field goals last week. He was the last freshman that they offered a scholarship to. He was born in Seoul, Korea. New Heisel out of Tempe, Arizona, will hold from the 44. 54-yard attempt's going to be way short. And the first half comes to a close, and UCLA, who has been really moving the ball offensively against everyone, not able to get on the scoreboard in this first half. We'll be back with halftime activities after a message about an upcoming show on CBS and a word from your local station. Defensive people. Well, the temperature hasn't changed, but I'm colder. Why is that? Relative humidity the same, the wind the same, and still a forecast of thunderstorms, even though the sun breaking through a couple of times. Ken Potter will be kicking off now for UCLA. The Bruins 
who are unbeaten once tied. Playing the Huskies who lost their first game of the year last weekend. Potter, line, drive. That ball is hit hard. And Aaron Williams is going to down it there. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Let's look offensively now at Washington. Tim Cowan continues to be the quarterback. Robinson, the touchdown in that first half. James, effective up the middle. Williams with a couple of impressive catches. The offensive line protecting well. Zach scoring, maybe the fastest man up front. Mallory made a big block, you might recall, on that touchdown run. He has James Robinson behind him, and Cowan ready to go from the 20. This is James. James will make it for five to the 25-yard line. Again, just showing great leg drive. Randall, Morgan, who had a sack in the first half, along with Barbie. Delacano almost had an interception that first half. Now, Butler has been shaken up in the ballgame. He's not in there right now. Knowles is in place of him. There is Montgomery, and number 85 is Knowles, who's in at the inside linebacking spot. Second down, five, James, a yard, that's all, to the 26, and it's third down. That's Morgan. Morgan from Louisiana. There are 15 players from different states on this UCLA team. Shows you the recruiting ability of Terry Donahue. He's really had great success going out of state. Third down four, and there's one of the men from Louisiana. He's had six tackles for a loss coming into this game. Thus far, Washington five of ten on third down conversion. Scancy in motion. Looking his direction and thrown at the feet of Roseboro. It's fourth down. So a game that everyone figured to be high scoring thus far. Just seven to nothing. Since that touchdown, the initial series of the game, Washington has punted six times and suffered one interception. This is Sanchez back for UCLA. Partridge to kick. Partridge has been busy, but he's been very effective, as that note would show you. For Patrick to snap. A flag on the play. A wobbly kick. Not well hit. Sanchez is going to get away from it. It's taken a Washington bounce. And it'll go out of bounds at the 26-yard line. But a penalty flag back at the 30-yard line. That was a 48-yard kick. Wasn't artistic, but very effective. Let's wait now for the determination on this penalty. Went up just about the time the ball was hit. The illegal procedure against Washington. That's only the second penalty of this game. You know, Don James said that nothing goes on on this football field that doesn't come through those headsets. <laughs> he is the chairman of the board. Official trying to get his microphone and gear there. Nope. Well, the modern marvel of electronics did not work that time. Anyway, it's an illegal procedure against Washington. You know, the first penalty, if you recall, was a face mask violation, a five-yarder. Very cleanly played football game. So after the penalty, fourth down coming up, nine yards to go. The ball up to 21, and again, Partridge will kick. Sanchez goes back for the Bruin. 13.44 to go. Third quarter. 7-0. Washington. This time he hits another shaky punt. Not all that effective, and it's going to go out of bounds. And this time UCLA will have it at the 43 rather than at their own 26. So they come away much to the advantage that time. 35-yard kick. Five-yard penalty gave him 17 additional yards that they would not have had. So it was a fortunate situation for him. Well, we're going to have a break in the action. UCLA with the football for the first time in the second half when we return to Husky Stadium. Well, the leading scoring team in the Pac-10, the total offense leader in the Pac-10, as you look at their offensive lineup, is not rolling all that well. Up front, the line has given up six sacks. UCLA in seven possessions, punted five times, fumbled once, and thrown an interception. That's not the kind of offensive football the Bruins are used to having. First down now from the 43-and-a-half-yard line. Oh, what a hit that time has put on Cephas. Washington playing so much more with intensity than last week against Stanford. Cadage and Holmes made the stop. There's Cadage. Cadage in that first half, 
seemingly was breathing down Ramsey's neck all day. Stewart was just outstanding in the first half. And back deep, Horton had the interception. He's done a good job in returning those punts. Nelson now comes into the backfield along with Bruno. No gain on that last play. Second and ten. Ramsey wants to throw. Protection there. Nobody open. Now he gets rid of it. Way out of bounds. Closest to the ball was Stewart. Terry Donahue looking in dismay. Steve, there just didn't anybody open. The significance of a first down play that doesn't produce any yardage is the fact that Washington, playing defense, can get in a situation where they can anticipate a pass, and that is what you want with a passing team. Tom Ramsey struggled. He is struggling. One interception. You can see what he's done. Eight of 15. He's had some time, and then other times he's just been really difficult. Six times he's been sacked. Third down, 10. They are one of eight on third down conversion. Time to throw. Who's open? Nobody. A fumble. I think Ramsey got on it. At seven sacks, Stewart was there, and Mark Stewart is playing a stellar game. Seven sacks of the board. Ramsey. You can see the confusion. The frustration. Bonafé will kick from inside the 30. Horton goes back. Washington looks like they're really coming after him here. Ten men? Nope, they're not. They're putting the return on. This is a fine kick. Horton having to get back. Tough catch. Horton was drilled at the 10. That ball was deceiving. I don't believe Horton thought that ball was kicked that hard. Number 17, Buenafe with a 48-yarder. And so UCLA protects a seven-point lead. UCLA with impressive wins this year. You think about earlier, they defeated Michigan. Michigan has not lost since that time. And they remained unbeaten today, beating Illinois. In the second half, Washington's had the better of it. That's where we are now with 12, 15 to go in the third quarter. It's the worst field position the Huskies have had this afternoon from the 10-yard line. And smothered that time right up the middle was Robinson, Whalen, a freshman, a redshirt freshman from Burlingame, California, and Blanchard Montgomery made the stop. Robinson now, 31 yards, 15 carries. No gain. Second down, 10. Remember now, UCLA is averaging over 38 points a game. Washington 35, and we stand 7-0 with 11.47 to go in the third. Game. Robinson in the backfield. Count to Jacques, and he's out to the 15-yard line. And that's going to bring up third down, still five. Delacono. Delacono from Baton Rouge. Everyone thought he was going to LSU. He flew out to UCLA, and they're glad to have him. That four-yard touchdown, the difference in the game thus far. Third and five now. Scanzi split to the top. Cowan off to Robinson. He breaks out, and I don't believe he got the first down. He needed to get to the 20. Let's see where they mark. It's going to be at the 19. It's a yard short. Don Rogers, Jr. from Sacramento, hit him hard. So Robinson is short. Washington will kick the football. Unbeaten SMU will remain that way. What do you think about that SMU-Arkansas game in a couple of weeks? And Oklahoma State throttled by Nebraska. That Nebraska-Oklahoma game, which we'll have Thanksgiving week, getting bigger and bigger. And now Arizona climbing back into that game with Stanford. Partridge to kick from inside the five. Sanchez back for the Bruins. No rush put on, and a beautiful kick. Sanchez, fair catch at the 43. And UCLA again will now try to get it together offensively. A 38-yard kick, but very high and no return. The thing that happens to you, Steve, when you've scored so many points is you kind of then get a little bit restless, you get a little antsy, and maybe get away from doing the things that have been successful. UCLA has got to establish their game, get back to a balanced attack, throw it downfield, make them defend them. From the 43, Townsell goes in motion. Ramsey, first man through. That's Bruno. Bruno across the 45 to the 47. Picking up three, maybe four yards. Ramsey's face has been etched with pain and frustration thus far. Seven times, sacks 
have been thrown by this Washington team. Four of them by Mark Stewart, who has ten tackles also. Second down, six. Bergman and Howell, two tight ends in. Cephas. Oh, he hit. Cephas is drilled, and the man who did it is Stewart again. I would say right now he's a leading candidate for an MVP award, isn't he? Boy, has he played well. That's 11 tackles for him. The defensive coaches say that Stewart is really best when he's on the tight end. This time, nobody blocks him. Somebody misses a man. It looked like Cephas' Karen Bruno missed the block. And Cephas is just there left alone with Mark Stewart one-on-one. -on -one. And he can't weigh the worst for wear on that one. <laughs> Third down now, five. Ramsey has to go to the air. Washington coming after him. Caldwell coming up the middle. He throws complete to Bergman, the tight end. He fumbled the ball. However, it's been blown dead. It'll be UCLA's ball to 35, a 17-yard pickup. Again, UCLA is predictable. They've got to throw here. They get pressure from the linebacker across the middle, but there, Bergman makes the catch. Right across the middle. They had a stun on. It was third and long. You get them in a predictable situation, then you can blitz. Andrews, the guy that fell on the ball, but it was blown dead anyway. From the 35, he's out of there now. Kevin Nelson replaces him. Here's an option. Ramsey backs it to the 31-yard line. Stewart again on the stop. Stewart this week, every place we would go, we would see him watching film. We'd go to different rooms over here at the University of Washington Athletic Department. He must have watched at least 20 hours of film and maybe that's the reason he's playing so well today i think part of it last week they were beating this team i, I played on a team that was a senior dominated club they lost a little bit of their edge a defeat pulls them together adversity makes you stronger you talked about that in that year where you lost to kansas then came back and did very well here's a busted play ramsey is going to get something out of it he may have a first down busted play horton made the stop it looks like he's short of the first down and will be it'll be third down coming up that's twice now that Ramsey's turned to hand off and nobody was there. And it's going to be third down, a yard to go. Two tight ends will come in now as Howell comes in. Townsell and Cormac Carney check out. UCLA needs to keep this drive going, their best drive of the afternoon. Third down, a yard or two of ten on third down. Zapali in motion, and it looks like they've got it. Very close. Bruno had to hit in there twice. Check that. Cephas. Cephas evidently the ball carrier. And so the first down will move it to the 25-yard line. UCLA keeps the drive alive. Well, they're going to bring the sticks in, but it sure looks like, nope, now they're going to give him the first down. At the 25. Cephas now comes out. UCLA surprisingly has more first downs. Yeah, those downs don't count very much. It's the touchdowns that make all the difference. That's the big statistic. Bruno now, Danny Andrews in the backfield. From the 25, UCLA trying to tie this game up. Andrews has the corner. Andrews to the 20, and the sophomores to the 19-yard line. Andrews has been their most effective runner. Newsom over to make the stop. Number 23. 53 yards now for Danny Andrews. Michigan, they're on their way to the Rose Bowl. Who they're going to meet, though, is certainly going to be a big issue in the next couple of weeks. Ohio State winning again. Earl Bruce's team starting now to play very well after losing at home to Wisconsin. Purdue over Iowa. Now, that is a real shot. Iowa winning last week in a big upset. Big Ten has been pretty hard to figure this year. Second down coming up. Four yards to go from the 19. Townsell split to the bottom of the screen. Penalty flag. Evidently, UCLA, some illegal procedure. Let's see. The illegal procedure. It'll be five yards against the Bruins. That's their first penalty of the afternoon. Indiana defeated Wisconsin. It's a big win for the Hoosiers and Northwestern, their third win. Dennis Green and the Wildcats, kind of a heady experience. Now Michigan, two games left. They have to finish against Ohio State at Columbus. Ohio State could do something yet about that Big Ten shirt. Second down, nine. 
Play action. Ramsey. Open. Bergman. Bergman to the 10. Oh, a great effort by Bergman to the 8-yard line. And he felt it there. 17-yard pickup. Stapleton. Newsom on the tackle. Bergman at 6'2", 226. It's the poise of Tom Ramsey. He goes back. He's looking at one, two, three. He's looking at all of his receivers. He's got four receivers out. Then he goes to Bergman. Bergman makes the play, of, evades one tackler, and then gets uh, strapped pretty good by Bill Stapleton at number 11. Bergman now three catches, 38 yards. Ramsey, 10 of 17, 118. First and goal at the 8 for UCLA. They trail 7-0. Ramsey on the option to Cephas. Cephas has a corner, five. Oh, he fumbled the ball. Let's see who has it. Washington. It looks like Dean Browning, number 99, and that's who it is, has the ball for the Huskies. character running the option play but they're taking advantage of a secondary that is pass conscious Sevis gets the ball now watch this he's going to get a good hit right here drops the ball Dean Browning will fall on it a big turnover for UCLA we'll be back in a minute seven nothing Washington windsurfing is one of the fastest growing sports and I'd like to know who got that assignment to go to Maui seven nothing Washington dodges a bullet Great hit that time by Newsom, separating the ball from Seaford. Larry Michael now in at tight end. Washington, their last eight possessions, put it once and intercepted once. Out from Chris James. So from the five, he's out across the 10 to the 11-yard line. And Washington's defense continues to just excel. UCLA, their best effort of the day, only to fumble to five, and James is shaken up. We mentioned he has to have that knee drained every week. And they are not deep at the fullback spot. Tui Miono would be the man they would have to go to. He's a freshman or Walt Hunt, a sophomore, if James can't continue. Watch Vince Newsom, number 23. They say that he is the best at run support in the secondary. Here's the option play to Cephas. Watch 23 make an excellent tackle right here on the football, on the shoulder, knocks the ball free, gives Washington an excellent opportunity for the turnover. What's interesting about that, Steve, is UCLA had that ball over four and a half minutes and nine plays before that fumble. James is up, but he's out of the game. Walt Hunt, sophomore from Seattle, comes in to replace him at fullback. Robinson. Robinson on a second down and six. Maybe got a yard or two. It's still going to be three yards to go for the first down. Third down coming up. Remember now, Washington has not been able to move the ball in their last eight possessions. And now they have a third down again. James has now come back in at fullback. Third down, three. Big offensive line. Mallory, Cody, on James, an anxious moment. Up the middle, that will not get the first down, and they're going to have to kick again. So on nine possessions, eight punts and an interception by this Washington team. UCLA defensively has been brilliant. Hartridge will come in to kick. Barbie making the stop on that last tackle. Hartridge keeping the hands warm with the sweatshirt. UCLA is playing very good defensively inside with Barbie, Morgan, and Randall, and the linebackers Butler and Montgomery. They really have been tenacious inside. Sanchez back at the UCLA 45-yard line. 4.50 to go, third quarter. 7-0, Washington up, booming kick by Partridge. Sanchez got to play center fielder on this one. Out to the 30. He's got a wall. 35, 40, 45, an excellent run. He had a 54-yard return last week, and this time he brings it out across the 45-yard line. Stransky made the stop. UCLA has the football, trailing by seven. An impressive stadium. Seattle, Washington. CBS bringing you NCAA football. We have 4.37 left in the third quarter. UCLA trails 7 to nothing. The last time down the field, they fumbled to the 5. I'm Gary Bender along with Steve Davis. Glad to have you with us. 
Danny Andrews, the tailback for the Bruins, carries across the 45 to the 47. Mark Stewart with yet another tackle. Steve, you just said something during that last break. Do you feel that UCLA maybe has figured something out? Yeah, I think they've got really, as we look at Washington, I think they're starting to get Washington guessing a little bit, getting them out of tempo, where they're doing different things when UCLA is doing a pass and they're doing something else on defense. So I think they've got a little advantage with them. Second down now, eight yards to go. Ramsey with protection over the middle. Perkman almost intercepted. That's Driscoll, 40, out of Tacoma, who was their leading tackler in the last two years. Berkman was open, but this man was in the way. Ramsey, the quarterback, dropping back. Driscoll, number 40. Really, this time, Ramsey forces the ball just a little bit. There's good coverage there. The Amber's there, and so is Driscoll. UCLA on third down, 3 of 11 on third down conversion. However, 2 of 3 in this half. Third down, 8. Ramsey with time again. Intercepted. It's picked off. That's Newsom. Newsom, who's made two big plays in this third quarter. Across the middle, Newsom will step right in front of the antenna receiver, Carmack Carney, and he makes the play. That's his Big fourth time. interception of the year. Coming into this game, Ramsey had only eight, suffered two today. Cowan back. That will not be caught. Nice effort by James, the fullback, and that'll bring up second and ten. So UCLA, a little self-destructive in this game, but also give credit to Washington. Newsom, in particular, is has just by himself brought the last two drives to a grinding halt. UCLA on offense has gotten Washington into playing pass defense, so now that's to their advantage. Now they can take advantage of it, but that time he forced the ball, caused the interception, gives Washington the ball back. 3.46 to go, third quarter, 7-0. Washington, Cowan back. Stanley, he got it! What a catch! And he's shaken up. He was belted instantaneously as the ball arrived there a 23 yard completion this is going to be something to see again i don't know how in the world he did it jimmy turner was defending for ucla scansy really concentrates on the ball of course cowan throws it where it has to be thrown but watch the hit after he makes the reception there's the concentration extension laying number two the safety really puts the hit on him Here's another shot of it. Watch the concentration. The ball, he knows he's going to get hit. He puts the ball away. Both feet are in bounds. Only one needs to be, but oh, what a concentrated effort by Paul Scanzi. Over there was Lang along with Jimmy Turner. He's up. He'll have to come out so they don't have to use the timeout. 23-yard completion to the 21, and Don James appreciative of the senior. They almost didn't offer him a scholarship. After all the scholarships have been given out, they went back and watched Scanzi play a basketball game, and that's when Don James thought he might be able to make it. He really is the emotional leader of this team, a stabilizing factor. Patterson's come in replacing him at the wideout. First down now from the 21 for the Huskies. Cowan looking the other side again. Williams, and Williams to the 10. Don Rogers over defending, and Cowan now seemingly has the hot hand. He's moving, Washington. The two turnovers have really gave, given Washington's offense a lot of encouragement. They're taking advantage of it. They're passing. They're being able to run the ball. They're really just tearing apart the UCLA defense. They've got to stop holding right here. That was the fifth catch of the day for Williams, going for 56 yards. From the 10, up the middle, James stays on his feet. He's a yard short of the first down. He is a gritty, determined type runner. He has outstanding leg drive, and that time he has it to the one first and goal. 
Watch the play. Inside to Chris James, number 31. Takes one good hit right there by Don Rogers. Bounces off, uses leg strength and his power. Boy, that's what we saw in films all week. He's a very underrated football player. Give up the middle. And Jock Robinson's going nowhere. So it's going to come to a third and goal. Robinson, all kinds of congestion that time. They had two tight ends in. UCLA reacted very well. Getting up was Morgan. That's the man you would expect to be tough on the goal line. Washington can control their own destiny going to the Rose Bowl. They have the ball game. They realize that that's a very important part right now. They cannot pick up a first down, or can they? By about two inches, I guess, is what they need to get. It's third and goal. Third, and it's not going to make it. It's going to be fourth down. Now, what they can do, let's set the scene. It looks like from looking at the chains that about two or three inches from the goal line, Steve, they could get a first down. So close, but they're going to have to settle for the field goal because it's fourth down coming up. Boy, that is close. You can't get much closer no, and not get a new series. But you can't afford not to get some points here, too. So I think Don James is really being smart here. Let's get some Shut points. He realizes what kind of game ball. we've got. It's not going to be a high-scoring ball game. Let's get some points. And here is a man who hasn't missed all year. 21 of 21. 35 of his last 37 in Husky Stadium. To lure to hole. This will be an 18-yard attempt. And Mr. Automatic makes it 10 to nothing. Chuck Nelson continues to just add to that scheme, add to that record. The old NCAA record was 16. He has now 27 in a row. You really have to give a lot of credit to Don James because he realizes the game, regardless of what everybody thought it might be, high scoring. You realize what's happening. It's going to be a low-scoring ball game. You're controlling UCLA on offense right now. You turn them back, get some points, and get a cushion. Well, these fans seeing the Huskies at home for the last time. Nelson with the 18-yard field goal. That could be a big field goal the way this defense of Washington's been playing. Nelson, when he kicks the ball, Steve, so fluid, so smooth. And they tell me he's an outstanding golfer, but he almost could be a scratch golfer if he had played up. Noki Williams, Townsell, go back now for UCLA. <laughs> it's a little nippy here in the Northwest. <laughs> They're enjoying it. This is a beautiful area. Stand up here in the press box and look over Lake Washington. People are coming to the game in boats. I'm watching from out there in a plane, I think, on the, on the water. Nelson kicking off, and there'll be no return on this one. He doesn't get much of a run at that ball, either. Baylor, now that would be a shock, wouldn't it? Oh. Arkansas struggled last week against Rice. They trailed at half. The men came back to win. USC playing with a new quarterback. Sean Salisbury is out for the year. Kansas leading Iowa State. UCLA possessions. Six punts, two fumbles, two interceptions. They have been frustrated. From the 20-yard line, they trail 10-0. Ramsey giving off to Sepas. Sepas for four to the 24-yard line. Second down, six. Starting to get a little bit darker now. The sun breaking through earlier. Temperature 45 degrees, and the dog Sun Dodger, the Husky. Townsell split out. For Matt Carney, Terry Donahue trailing now by 10. Gift again to Sepas. And Sepas across the 25 to the 27 yard line. A passing situation now coming up for the Bruins. Again, you get UCLA into a predictable passing situation. That's exactly what the Washington coaches wanted to get today is get Tom Ramsey where you know what he's going to be doing. That gives you an opportunity. Thus far, no points for UCLA. Remember, they're averaging almost 40 a game. Third down three. Harper Howell in motion. 
Andrews, and Andrews got the first down. Again, he has been the man who's been most effective with his Bruin football team. And so UCLA has new life. 62 yards for Andrews. Andrews' biggest day of the season was 79. He had one start last year as a freshman. They have a lot of young running backs. Andrews, Scott, who we haven't seen, both sophomores. Cephas is a junior. Nelson's a junior. First down for the Bruins. 19 seconds left in this third quarter. Andrews again. Andrews to the 40, lunges forward, and he's very close to another first down. Dean Browning made the stop. UCLA moving the ball once again. Three seconds left in this quarter, and that will be the end of the third quarter with the score. Washington 10, UCLA nothing. We'll be right back with fourth quarter action after this message and a word from your local station. We're ready to begin the fourth quarter. Gary Bender with Steve Davis. You know that guy, Steve? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think anybody but sitting by probably knows him. <laughs> Rip Van Winkle. All right, here we go. We start the fourth quarter. 10-0 Washington. The UCLA Bruins have a second down, a yard to go from their own 42-yard line. Kevin Nelson, and Nelson has the first down. Now, let's go to New York and to Brent Musburger. We understand Herschel Walker's running wild. Gary, he is indeed running wild. 35 carries, 221 yards, three touchdowns. Georgia shutting out Florida 27-0. Another major development. Arkansas has just lost to Baylor 24-17. Arkansas falls from the ranks of the unbeaten. Back to Gary. This is becoming an upset day, isn't it? LSU upsetting Alabama. Pittsburgh upset, and now Arkansas on a first down. Andrews is smothered for a loss. Back to the 41-yard line. Ken Driscoll was there, number 40. Stuart Hill now playing the linebacking spot, number 46, limping a little bit. There's the stats in the third quarter, and UCLA is leading in total offense, but not on the scoreboard. And the really amazing thing, Washington's been averaging 408 yards of total offense, but it's been those four turnovers of UCLA, and especially the fumble deep in the territory when they're going in for a score that's really been costly. And fumble coming at the five-yard line. Second down now, 14 for the Bruins. 14 minutes left in this game. UCLA trying to remain unbeaten as this has been an upset Saturday. Ramsey to Bergman. He makes a fine catch, but they're way short of any first down. Still going to be eight or nine yards to go. And it comes to a third down. Bergman's been effective today at that tight end spot. Again, the perfect situation for Washington. Gets you into a third long situation or second long where you've got to throw the football. That time they had three deep backs, five underneath backs, and really just Ramsey couldn't go anywhere with the ball. Ramsey's had to work for everything he's got for today. And he's had to look about his third receiver. Bergman, his fourth catch for 42 yards. Third down, nine for the Bruins. Ramsey has protection. Going down the sideline, Andrews out of bounds. Horton covering very effectively on the play. He just wasn't open at all. There just isn't anybody open on many occasions. So Ramsey and the Bruins run out of downs. Coming in will be Bonafé to kick. It's hard to believe the teams have scored the points they have on this Washington club as Horton goes back. Horton coming in here averaging over 10 yards a return on punts. Bonafé the last time kicked one very effectively. And snap! He's going to get a block! Partially tipped. The battle is on and the ball at the 48-yard line. Now, where they've recovered it, it would be way short of the first down. Five-yard kick after that ball was blocked. A bad snap, and Washington was there. Looked like Leapart and Hill were the guys who poured through to get a, at least a hand on the ball. Man shaken up. That's Fred Small, number five. He's a sophomore from Los Angeles. Discussion going on. Let's look at this again. See who got it. Let's see who gets it. The ball is off, way off, high into the right. So he's got to really make something happen. They're just setting him up. It looked like Lee Part, number 18, uh, 24, made the play, <laughs> blocked it, partially blocked it, and then it's just a matter of getting it. Now we have a big discussion going on. UCLA did recover the football at the 49. 
and they will have the first down. Where they recovered it was short of the first down over there, but the discussion was Don James wanting to know why they had the first down, but they do at the 49. And so the Bruins really get a break. Don James with a 10 nothing lead. This club last year finishing 10 and 2, coming in here with a 7 1 mark this year. The reason they could recover that, of course, is Washington touching it first. Here's the poly. Toa Sapali, a senior out of Oxnard, California, moving the ball out to the 41-yard line. Make that the 46-yard line. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. Cormac Carney comes back in. Bruno comes in. There's what UCLA's done in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to do it again if they're going to pull this one out. They trail 10 to nothing. Three wideouts. Doki Williams is in there with Townsville and Cormac Carney. And they give up the middle to Andrews. And Andrews, very close to another first down inside the 40. Stuart Hill made the stop. I'm impressed with Andrews. He has run tough today. A hard-nosed carrier out of Carson, California. And that'll be another UCLA first down. Line of scrimmage, the 38. UCLA's moved the ball. They just cannot get it across the goal line. There's the first down. They lead in that department. Andrews, big block up front, good hole, and he uses it to the 31-yard line. Stuart Hill out of Redmond, Washington, making the stop on Andrews. UCLA marching, lots of time yet, 11.58 to go in this game. The line of scrimmage, the 32. Bruno and Kevin Nelson now in the backfield for Coach Terry Donahue. Donahue with his 50th win this year. That's the quickest any Bruin coach has picked up 50 wins in his seventh year at the helm. Get to Nelson. Boy, has he hit at the 30-yard line. Mark Stewart again. We keep bringing up number 38's name. And here he is getting up. He's been in on a bunch of them. So it's going to be third down, two yards to go from the 30-yard line. Andrews will come back in. Nelson will check out. You wonder if UCLA hasn't began to ask themselves, what do they got to do to score? They've moved the ball. And now another drive, a big third down. Ramsey on third and two, and it's complete. But is it enough for the first down? Andrews, it looks like it is. Andrews skidding out of bounds. They're going to measure across the way. I sight it to see if he did get it. It was third and two, and it is a first down for the Bruins. Well, they went to the air on a third and two. I don't know if Washington expected that. Larry Donahue probably has felt a lot better. He's trailing by 10. He had food poisoning last night, and he's not used to this cold weather. But he'd warm up a lot if his team could score on this drive. Sapali in the backfield. Play action. Nice fake by Ramsey. But Ramsey's going to be carried for a lot. Caddy, 61. Eighth tackle for a loss today by this Washington defense. Well, the loss will move it back out to the 30. Second down, 12. Again, the Washington defense really dropping back a three-man ru rush. Cadage 61 is coming for him, pressures him out of his pocket and makes the tackle on him. From the 30 now, second down, 12. Andrew, Sapali. Sapali's 19 in the backfield. That's Bertman in motion. Andrews fumbles. Washington's got it. turnover of the game by UCLA. Three of them have been fumbled. Again, it's tough. Danny Andrews, number 24, another critical turnover. The ball never really got control under control. He lost it. You think of weather, you think of wet ball, all the factors. It's trouble. We'll be right back. 
Trailing 10 to nothing with 9.48 to go in this game. Their fifth turnover, their third fumble of the afternoon. Cowan gives his shot to Robinson, and Robinson across the 35 to the 37. Tommy Taylor, 51 now in there. Looks like Robinson a little shaken on the play. So it's going to bring up second down and six yards to go. Stats in this first and second half. Just really the statistics are not indicative of what's on the scoreboard, is it? Exactly contradicted. Second and six. Game. Now Sterling Hines has replaced Jock Robinson. Sterling Hines, the world-class sprinter, and he has the ball now, and he has a first down. Sterling Hines beats Herschel Walker in a 100-meter dash this summer. I'll give you the kind of an idea of the speed he has. David Randall made the stop. Washington yet with another first down at the 44. The Husky defense, they've been the stars of the day, and in particular, Mark Stewart, we have an update on him. He has 14 solo tackles in this game. And the 44, first down for the Huskies. James, James held it hard as he crosses the 45-yard line. Eight minutes, 45 seconds. Well, what this will do, if it stays this way, is make the game next week in Tempe, Arizona, between Arizona State and Washington, a real battle. SMU winning. Stanford, Arizona. Washington State, that's who Washington will finish with in Pullman. Next two games for UCLA at home against Stanford USC. Washington goes on the road to Arizona State and Washington State. Second down eight. Sterling Hines. Hines, who is a Canadian, across the 50 to the 48-yard line. Tommy Taylor making the stop once again out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now Washington's just going to get into their power game. I don't think, unless they get in a long situation, they're going to try to throw the football. I think they're going to try to power it, use their strength and their size in the offensive line and just try to dominate UCLA and eat up the clock. Well, these seniors playing their last game at home have really come up to the task. They have played remarkably well. Hines and James in the backfield. Third down, three. Cowan on a roll. As he hit. That will be a tackle for a loss back inside the 50 to the 47. That was Lee Knowles. Also Barbie, number 89 out of Sacramento. That's the first sack of the day for UCLA. So it's fourth down. Washington will kick. Still time left, 7-15. The way UCLA came back in that Michigan game earlier this year, you've got to believe that Ramsey's very capable of that. Partridge to kick. Sanchez at the 10-yard line. Boom, and kick. Has he done the job today? And that's going to make it in for the touchback. Partridge with a 51-yarder. Earlier, a 62-yard kick was booted in this game. That ball went 66 yards in the air, but they only get credit for 51. UCLA still trying somehow to get on the scoreboard. Washington leading 10 to nothing. You can hear the roar in the background. They have what they call the wave going on where they stand up in succession completely around the pole of the stadium. And this crowd enthusiastic. UCLA trying to avert their first shutout since 1971. Ramsey. He'll lose yardage to the 15. Last time that UCLA was shut out was by Michigan in 1971. That was 38 to nothing. Pepper Rogers was the coach at that time. Gary Donahue has been very effective against Don James. You know, USC has had a tough time against Washington. Don James won four of seven from him. So Terry Donahue has had a very effective run of things, but today it may be coming to an end. That was the ninth sack of the day, that last play. Second and 15. Council in motion. Open is Kevin Nelson. Nelson to the 50. Nelson to the 40. And UCLA with that quick striking power. All the way down inside the Washington 40-yard line of 46-yard completion. 
Nelson this time. They have two deep secondary backs that are playing halves, and then they have five under. Nelson, number three, goes right behind the five people underneath. Right there, he goes inside. Now he's working on two secondary backs. And really, it's just a foot race behind Stewart, Stapleton, all of them trying to make the catch. Good execution of the pass play. A 46-yarder sets it up at the 39 of Washington. Still 5.45 left in this game. Ramsey back. Over the middle, Townsville. Townsville's going to take it to the 10 5 touchdown. Well, they averted the shutout. A 1971 shutout, not going to occur here in 1982. And how quickly UCLA breaks their long scoring drought. Townsville this time will go right to the halves. There's two backs playing deep responsibility. The field is divided by halves. He goes right between them, right there. Nobody's on him. That's number 10, Ray Horton, and it's just a track meet. He's going to meet. They split the halves. They have half responsibility. He goes right in between them. An 80-yard drive in three plays. 121 is how long it took. And Townsville with the touchdown. A timeout has been called by UCLA. Two passes for 85 yards, one of them 46 yards to Kevin Nelson, and then the touchdown strike to this man, JoJo Townsell. Townsell's second all-time leading receiver. He had 87 catches coming in here. That is his eighth touchdown catch of the year. He has three today for a total of 74 yards. That's been part of the problem. They feel like they've got to get him the ball a whole lot. They've not been able to get the ball in his hands enough because he's an exceptional runner once he gets the ball. Well, that timeout. Now they come out to attempt the point after. John Lee to do the honors. John Lee kicking with New Heisel hold. New Heisel will hold. And this crowd now is a little bit quiet. Quickly, a minute 21 seconds, and they go 80 yards. Kick on the way, and it's now 10-7. So UCLA frustrated by the turnovers. This time, strike in a hurry with five and a half minutes left to go. Only from Chevrolet. Only until November 15th on both cars and trucks. Get a round-trip ticket for two on Eastern Airlines. Good for a full year. When you buy or order one of these new 1982 or 83 Chevrolets by November 15th, Fly across the country to visit relatives or give the round trip ticket for two as a gift. Plus, on new 82 models only, get 10.9% financing that can save you hundreds of dollars in financing costs. It's the best time to shop for a Chevy in the past 10 years. You don't have to put up with hotel excuses like the maid, the TV man, or the plumber is gone for the day. Because Holiday Inn gives you this no excuses guarantee. Everything in your room will be right, or we'll make it right. No excuses. Or that night, you stay free. You don't get this guarantee from any other hotel chain. Not one. So, let us take care of you. Holiday Inn gives you a guarantee. Not excuses. Tomorrow, the NBA, it will seem funny to see Dave Cowens in a Milwaukee Bucks uniform and David Thompson for Seattle. That's what it's going to be when they go against each other. Be sure to be with us. This crowd of 60,000 all of a sudden realizes they haven't won it yet. Washington looked like they were in the driver's seat leading 10 to nothing. And in a minute and 21 seconds and 80 yards later, it's 10 to 7. Don James realizing how tough it is to beat UCLA. He's lost the last two here against Terry Donahue. There, you don't can't strike any quicker than that unless you do it in one play, huh? They were able to get Washington in a pass defense situation where they were playing hands. Tim Potter to kick off. Peoples and Aaron Williams back deep, and Potter really gets into it. They'll start from the 20-yard line. Well, this is quite an interesting score here, but let's look elsewhere. Georgia, Herschel Walker having a heyday. Had to be Florida's third loss. And USC under a new quarterback. Young man from Oklahoma, the quarterback. That's right, Scott Tinsley. <laughs> Nebraska. Nebraska and Oklahoma. We're going to be doing that game the day after Thanksgiving. That's shaping up to be for all the Big A title, isn't it? Trip to the Orange Bowl and a lot of pride. <laughs> and you know what that's all about. First and ten, Huskies from the 20 yard line. First down now for the Huskies. They lead it 10 to 7. Cowan for Robinson. 
And he'll bring it out across the 25 to the 27 yard line. Coming up to make the stop on the play. Don Rogers. And they pick up some pretty good yardage on a first down. When UCLA scores so quickly, I'm sure Don James gets a little bit gun shy of, of wanting just to do anything but hammer the ball. Keep it under control. Keep it away from UCLA. Look Make at first that. and 10s. Look at that. UCLA's had the ball almost again as much time and still trail. On a second down and three, came straight ahead. Lee Knowles made the stop. They have a first down. So Washington coming back with that momentum starting to turn on him a little bit and that will stymie UCLA momentarily the first down moving it across the 30 to the 31 five minutes left in this game Paul Cody has really done a good job on Carl Morgan inside he's really been able to control him most of the football game they both won their battles but in the critical running plays Morgan's not been able to make the tackle well, Don James looks very calm cool and collected doesn't he Hunt now in the backfield Get to Josh Robinson. Robinson dropped by Lang. Looks like another Washington first down. Out across the 40 to the 42 yard line. The last time that, uh, should say two times ago, that Donahue beat Washington, they won by this identical score 10 to 7. There's Morgan, number 40, really gets rolled up. Everybody's getting a man. Now watch the special effort of Robinson. He gets people on him, hands are all over his body, but he's able to just keep using his strength and power and speed and make the play. The Pac-10's leading rusher now has 63 yards for the afternoon. Busted play, and Cowan's going to pay for it. We've had several plays like that today on both sides. He had Hines and Hunt in the backfield, but didn't get the ball to either one of them. Watch it this time. The play's designed to go the other way. It looked like maybe an option play developed. There's not a whole lot you can do. What you'd like to do is disappear in a situation <laughs> like that. Randall, 64 on top of him, a transfer from SMU. He was a tight end there. And Cowan now on the sideline. He's belted pretty good on that. Do you think he's shaking up? Look at him. Is he okay? Looks like they uh, look at him over in the face mask area. And Pelur may come in. We may have a new quarterback. Cowan may have really been belted on that play. Pelur is getting ready to come in. We have a quarterback change. So the busted play, and Cowan really belted. And now Pelur coming in a tough situation. Second down, 10. A junior from Bellevue, Washington. He had a grandfather and father to play to Washington State. His brother played there. Now playing in the NFL, a linebacker. So Pelur will come in, and Cowan was just bent backwards on that last play. Well, the tough situation here for Pelur is just get the snap as they look at Tim Cowan, number 14, the quarterback. But make sure you get the snap. It's second down, long situation. It is not a fun place to be. But make sure you get the snap. Don't turn the ball over. pelur has been in this situation a bunch, but still, it's not fun to come out there. Your hands are probably a little cold. He's not warmed up. We have a problem with the clock right now. That's the delay. The interesting thing about Pelur and Cowan is they are really supportive of each other. They're very good friends, very positive type of a relationship, which could be different when you have two guys battling for that starting quarterback spot. So we're having thought... some corrections made on the clock. Washington will have a second and ten. Pelur must go at least one play. It looked like Cowan might come back in after this as he was standing and looked and appeared to be ready to re-enter. 343 is what shows on the clock. And there's your score, 10-7. Time starting to be very, very important. Now they're changing around. Don James would probably like three seconds to be remaining. <laughs> the fans like it. UCLA would want 40. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how many games this year we've had scoreboard problems. The clock electronically just not getting it done the whole time. Washington took possession with 537 to go. And now let's see where they're going to leave it. They have it at 402. That's the time now. 402. In the game, UCLA has two timeouts left. Washington with all three. Here we go. Second and ten. There's Cowan. 
I think he'll be ready to come back in. You've got to understand, Pelora is very cold standing by this entire game. To Hines, and Hines on second and ten gets two, maybe three, and that's all. So it's a third down coming up. Eddie Leone was a decathlon man, linebacker number 33. He was fourth in the Pac-10 of the decathlon. Third down and still eight yards. Now Cowan comes back in. Cowan coming in and a change in the secondary. Mike Durden comes in at a cornerback. They're going to go their nickel backs. Third and eight. They're five of 18 on third down conversion. Cowan. Hines dropped it. Sterling Hines would have made a very important catch. Now they've got to kick the football. Hines, the sprinter, had four catches coming into this game. Perfectly thrown that time. If UCLA could win this ball game, that might be the big play of the ball game right here. Hines, all he's got to do is catch the football. The young junior lets it bounce right off his shoulder pads. That is one you don't want to have come back to. Ron James, he had to be trying to catch his breath after that one. Hartridge to kick to Sanchez. Remember now, the Bruins have two timeouts left. Kicking away from Sanchez. Takes the Washington bounce, and they're going to mark it at the 18-yard line. UCLA at the 18. Two minutes, 57 seconds left. They trail by three. Meet John Hybrid III and his family. Not much personality but gluttons for punishment. These scientifically advanced, lifelike dummies are helping General Motors lead the industry in safety-related research by demonstrating how the human body withstands force. And you think you've had some tough days. We're living up to our commitment. Right now, today, we're the best GM ever. You can open up your world and make it shine. You can do it. You can squeeze that extra something out of life. Yes, you can. You can set a goal and do it. Add your own style to it. It's your world. It's your life. It's your time. Every minute you can do it. Every day. Yes, you can. You can grow in your own way. You can do it. And we like to help. Visa. Tomorrow on CBS Sports, unusual beauty and surfing skill combine on a side-by-side -side slalom race at the Maui Windsurfing International. Undefeated Billy Costello in front of a hometown crowd against Willie Rodriguez. And then NBA excitement, a comeback saga, David Thompson of the Sonics and Dave Cowens of the Bucks. Be a part of the action tomorrow on CBS Sports. The Washington crowd is on their feet. Two minutes, 57 seconds left to go in this game, the final home game of the year. UCLA the last time took a minute 21 to march 80 yards. Now from the 18-yard line, they have 257 left in the game. Ramsey back. He completes it to Bruno. Bruno up to the 20. That's a gain of only two. Chris O'Connor made the stop. They took a lot of time and only picked up two yards on it. Good coverage that time by the Washington Huskies. Washington has been most effective against UCLA when they've gone to a three-back Five underneath and three rushing people. That's when they've been most effective. That's what they were in that time, forcing Ramsey to go to his relief back. There's that offensive line of Williams, 60, 2 4, 59. Second down, 8 from the 20. Ramsey, Bergman dropped it. There's a flag back at the 10. Both teams dropping wide open passes. Hines earlier, Ramsey's a plotting. Evidently, there's a penalty against Washington. Holding? No, it's against UCLA. Ramsey thought the penalty was going against Washington. Now you can see he found out differently. We've not had too many calls. I don't think we've had a holding call all day, have we? We had very few penalties today. Boy, isn't that something? Hines wide open, Bergman wide open, and neither one able to latch onto the football. Let's remind her once again, we'll go directly to New York. Aaron and Brent standing by, and they got a lot to tell you and show you. <laughs> I'm going to have to sit down and kind of, I guess, take its tolls, decide how many teams have fallen from the unbeatens. 
what has happened today. It's been a big November Saturday. Third down. They refuse that penalty. Third down and eight. Ramsey hits Sapali. Sapali's going to be short of the first down. But they almost have to on fourth down. Do you think go for it, or will they try to kick it away with two minutes? Well, there's not a whole lot of difference between third and eight and third and uh, 15, 13. So they just force them, or in second 13, don't give them any more downs. Make them go third down, make them throw. Boy, a big play coming up now. Fourth down, two yards to go. 144 left. Zapali in motion. Ramsey, look out, throwing up to Bergman. He's got it. Bergman, the tight end at the 50. He's to the 47, and UCLA's alive. A 27-yard completion. So Bergman redeems himself after earlier dropping one. The pressure of making him go to a fourth down situation, denying them the opportunity to get two extra downs. This time, Ramsey throws it up. Bergman makes a great play in between two defenders and gives them new life and hope. He's 5 of 69. 5 catches 69 yards. First down at the 47 of Washington. Ramsey back. They have two timeouts left. He's going to lose a yard. He may have gotten to the line of scrimmage at best. A minute 10, the clock running. UCLA is going to have to hurry or get the timeout. A minute five, a minute four, it's still rolling. There it is, one minute to go. They're wasting too much time. They really are. Kevin Nelson comes in with a play. 54 seconds, 53, coming down to 50 seconds. Second down, 10 from the 47 of Washington. UCLA trailing by three. Ramsey, he completes it, Cormac Carney. Carney trying to get away, and he's dropped at the 43-yard line. Chris O'Connor over to make the stop. Now, remember earlier, John Lee tried a 54-yard field goal. They're still a ways from that. UCLA expends their second timeout. Gary, that is really a critical mistake. It was a minute four when they started, when the last play was over, and it's gone down to 35 seconds. They spent way too much time. Should have called the timeout. Well, they have now. Now, they're just too far away for the field goal. Lee tried one from 54, and he wasn't even close, as you remember. And with one timeout left, your options, well, they're really narrowed down. There's Ramsey. Boy, he's been a very determined young man. I don't think I've ever seen a quarterback have to work harder than he has. That one drive, they scored in a hurry. The rest of the time, he's just been fighting his way all the way up the field. Of course, again, the big play that gave him a chance was Ramsey going to Bergman in a very critical fourth down and long situation to get the first and ten. It gave him a new life. But, oh, they wasted so much time. 29 seconds to get that play off. Ramsey, in this quarter, is 8 of 10 for 130 yards. For the game, he's 18 of 29 for 248 yards. Statistician Mike Swanson, the best in the business. Thanks to our spotter, Steve Bear. And with a third down, seven. You can't do anything, really, up the middle unless you get it far enough up the field to get that last time out for the field goal. You go sideline. I think you try to go back across the middle like they've done in previous. Ramsey back. Time. He throws it. Incomplete. That was Nelson, the intended receiver. Stops the clock with 30 seconds. Still a third down. There is Don James. Looks like nothing really bothering him at this particular time, but you know better than that. Again, they're going, that time they were in what we call three deep, and the field was divided in thirds. In that situation, it is extremely difficult to go across the middle, and you've got to drop it off your relief back as he did that time. Fourth down, seven. fourth down. They converted it the last time. Let's see if they can this time. Ramsey! Andrews had it and was separated from the ball. Andrews had a catch at the 20. And Meander was over there.
Let's go back and reconstruct this one. You couldn't ask for a better script as far as Ramsey wanting to throw across the middle. He does. Watch him. He's going to Andrews, number 24. Now he puts the ball away, but look at the tremendous, ferocious hit by Bill Stapleton, number 11. That was who it was, the Stapleton. And so with 21 seconds left, Washington tried to kill the clock. Watch Tom Ramsey. It's a tough way to lose your first football game of the year. And Gary, it appears that three undefeated teams hit the dirt today. UCLA, probably, Arizona, I mean, excuse me, Arkansas and Penn State. Ah, oh, agony. And UCLA has just used their last timeout with 11 seconds. Well, Washington coming back from that stunning upset last week. Ending what they think at the time was the chance for a national championship. But the way everybody's getting beat, we may not have anybody unbeaten. It's just unbelievable. Arkansas hits the dirt today, Penn State, probably UCLA in the last 11 seconds. You cannot lose in November and win a national championship. It is tough. You mean Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh okay. going down. Oh, I said Pittsburgh, sure, okay. But it's second down coming up now. That's academic. 11 seconds left. They're celebrating. Washington now will, of course, await the outcome of tonight's game in Tempe, Arizona, as Arizona State, with that brilliant defensive team, will play Oregon State, and then next week play host to Washington. Terry Donahue, what an effort his team has given this afternoon, but it's going to come up short. Total offense in this game, UCLA had 382, Washington 226. But Washington has the big statistic, a three-point lead. No timeouts left now for the Bruins. That's the penalty flag. That's Mike Lude standing alongside Don James, the athletic director. They're very good friends. They both were at Kent State before coming to the University of Washington. a big win for the Huskies and a lot of polls preseason they were picked number one number one seven weeks and Stanford and John Elway dismantled them they come back with the intensity with a senioritis situation a lot of being written about there were too many seniors that possibly they'd lost some of their intensity but it's back today they played well very well and Cowan now is just going to let the clock expire what a win for Don James. The Washington Huskies can still control their destiny in the Pac-10. They go to 8-1. and one. Arizona State next. Washington State after that. Looks like Michigan will meet whoever does come out of this Pac-10.